right, so to start a forward interlocking, you just start with a simple interrupted suture. So I'll just pass through skin and skin there, making sure to get some split thickness bites. I'll tighten that first throw down just enough, and then the second throw I'll pull parallel until I'm happy with my tension, then pull up about 30 degrees to lock that knot. And I'll place another two throws on top of that to secure our first knot in place. Then we use a thick side of our scissors to cut a long tag, and we'll carry on with our forward interlocking. It can be helpful to hold the strand of your suture down sort of like that, and I'll show you why in a moment. Because you pretty much do the same as a simple continuous. You do some nice split thickness bites with your needle through the skin, right? So it starts out kind of looking like a simple continuous, only you're going to go back through that loop that you created with your first suture throw to make sort of an L shape like this. So you'll see if I hold this down like that, I don't actually have to jump back through my loop like I did in that first one. So let's get my nice superficial bites here, and I'm coming through that loop which helps streamline things and speed up your suturing. If you lay each pass down nicely, it'll keep it looking really pretty. But sometimes it can look a little wonky like that. Just don't get worried. You kind of redistribute the tension along the suture and you'll be able to get it back to the normal L shapes like this. All right, so I'll carry on with this. So you'll continue the same pattern. I have my suture strand down there, so I'm able to kind of go immediately through the loop like I mentioned. I'm adjusting the tension and laying it down nicely when I need to. So I'm pulling it so that it's nice and has our L shapes again, and then I'm carrying on. So with practice, you'll likely be able to take a single needle pass through both edges of the incision like you're seeing here. However, if you're having trouble getting really precise needle placement, it's best to just come out in the middle of the incision and turn this single bite that you see here going across into two separate bites. So one, one on one side of the skin, come out, and then one entering into the other side of the skin. In this next bite here, you can really see what I mean by a split thickness closure. See how the needle is really exiting right at that dermal edge and entering right on the dermal edge on the other side? This is ideally what you want to do for a skin closure. You don't want your needle to be passing deep into sub-Q tissues and close and evert that as well. Our goal is to oppose those two skin layer edges as precisely as possible. We try and minimize manipulation and handling of the skin with instrumentation as much as possible because this can be traumatic to the skin. So often you'll see that I'm able to manipulate the skin with closed instruments or a finger. Spacing is typically three to five millimeters from the edge of the incision and three to five millimeters between suture bites. So I'm getting close to the edge here, so it's about time for me to tie back to my previous loop. I probably would throw one more suture honestly in this, but because I was running out of suture, I just finished here to try and show you. Now I didn't leave myself much of a tag, so one trick you can use is a little bit of a skinnier instrument. So I can use the tips of these hemostats rather than my needle drivers, and I can get a little bit of an easier wrap with them. So we're tying back to the previous loop like we would with most continuous patterns. Remember to keep your instrument open when you're tightening down with a loop so that you don't tighten one strand of the loop down more than the other. So you open jaws and pull it tight. And we'll usually throw four throws total for two square knots to complete it and then cut our tags. All right, so here's our completed forward interlocking pattern. You can see it resists opening pretty well, and if things tighten up here or there along the way, there's enough room in the suture to prevent over-tightening and distribute the tension across the entire closure. 